that you're all connected from different places around the world. Uh, so it's, it's really nice. I believe a lot of people also in South Africa uh, who might be coming to the event, which is so exciting jealous at the same time. Uh, so my name is Ana Maria Meshkurti. I am uh, representing today the WEF Global Shapers community. This is a community of the World Economic Forum, uh, and we have hubs around the world. It's a community of about 15,000 people, uh, and uh, a lot of us are also involved in the AI space, and this is how uh, we met with uh, Nick and, and all his work, of course, which is very known globally, internationally, um, not only because of the great event that he's leading that we will learn some more from him later on, uh, but also on the work that he does in AI. And this is why we are gathered today to uh, launch virtually the State of AI in Africa report, uh, the 2022, uh, uh, the, the report that was already launched in person, and Nick will tell us a little bit more about this uh, in a minute, and uh, we are doing the virtual launch today. What is very special about this launch is that, of course, uh, you don't have to be in South Africa <laughs> to, to be part of it, uh, you can learn more about the report and you get also a copy of the report for all of you that have joined us on this call. Uh, please don't share it with anyone who didn't join today. Very important, keep it for yourself. Uh, and also you get to, of course, uh, get a ticket uh, for the upcoming event that Nick will also share a little bit more. But who is Nick? Uh, thank you so much, Nick, for, for joining us. Dr. Nick Bregtro, uh, he actually is a tech veteran. I would say uh, he's worked in Europe, in North America, and in Africa, of course. Uh, he has uh, been helping customers deploy and mature complex enterprise platforms and systems. He's a AI expert, I would say, on many, many years. He's worked also with the United Nations, with the AI for Good, Global Summit of the International Telecommunication Union. Uh, he's a very, very big name in the space. And it's really great that uh, he took this initiative to, to launch this report, which is much needed, so much needed intelligence coming from the African continent. And he has done so much work to really gather this intelligence for all of us. And we're also so grateful that Nick, you are giving this to us uh, to, to really sharing this knowledge with, with all of us. Um, so I think without further ado, I would pass it on to you, Nick, because this is who everyone came to listen to uh, and to, to really go on with, with the report and, and talk a little bit about uh, the story as well. I think people like the story of it as well uh, and how the journey came here. And uh, without uh, also forgetting all our partners that are here on the, on the first slide as well, uh, ITU, as I mentioned, the United Nations Telecommunication Agency that is supporting this event, AI Media, as well as the WEF Global shapers. So thank you, Nick. Up to you now. Thanks, Anna Maria. Brilliant to, to be here. Well, welcome, everybody. It's, it's uh, great to be talking to all of you virtually. I uh, hope to meet you one day uh, physically. Um, but yeah, if, if you um, didn't miss, uh, if you missed the, the physical launch, which we did in South Africa, um, the idea of today was just to do a, a virtual launch. Um, and to share the opportunity to, to learn more about what's going on in, with, with AI in Africa. Um, and then obviously talk a little bit about the report itself. Um, as uh, Anna Maria mentioned, uh, who is Nick? It's a good question. I'm originally a chemist. Uh, for all the chemists out there, go science. Um, but I got eventually, after I graduated, got involved in, in uh, tech transfer. Uh, working for the UK government, um, looking at applications of technology for civil applications uh, in the environment sector. Uh, I then eventually ended up moving to South Africa just over 10 years ago. Um, and I started AI Media in, in, in 2018. And it really came from the fact that um, when I was looking at the landscape in 2017, um, there, there really wasn't much in the way of a business and trade community what I would call a real world community talking about AI on the African continent. There's a very vibrant academic and research uh, community, um, lots of tech meetups. Um, you may have heard of the deep learning in DARBA. If you haven't learned, uh, if you haven't, uh, please um, check it out. If you're more academically focused, it's a great academic and research um, uh, community across the continent. But, but really what we wanted to do was focus on the B2B, uh, business to business, and business to government, um, discussion and also um, spread a little bit more news around the AI for Good uh, program, which uh, I first came in contact with at the end of 2018. So if you do want to connect with me on LinkedIn, please do so. 
Um, I, I'm a, a prolific connector and user of LinkedIn, and it's always great to, uh, to connect with new people. So what is AI Media? Uh, well, we're a niche um, advisory consulting business. Uh, we run an annual event called AI Expert Africa, which you can see behind me. Uh, we publish a quarterly magazine, which is a digital magazine. It's also free to read um, called Synapse, which is Africa's, um, I still believe, first and only um, regular publication looking at AI across the continent. Um, we provide industry insights and advisory. The report is part of that activity. And the most important thing is we're community centric. So we do try and create a physical community and online community. We have a LinkedIn group, which I, I can also uh, add you to as well. But really what we're about is connecting people with opportunity, sharing knowledge, showcasing and telling the good news story around innovation on the African continent. Uh, we provide educational opportunities, support to government and NGOs and embassies. And at the end of the day, we do want to create opportunity, whether it's a job investment or if you're a supplier uh, to find a new, a new, a new customer. Um, if we dive in a little bit, uh, AI Expo Africa, which is happening in September in Johannesburg, it's a broadly business centric community. Uh, we do pride ourselves on being transparent about, about the event. And you can go and learn a lot more about that at uh, AIExpoAfrica.com. Um, the magazine is called Synapse. You can go in, uh, onto the issue platform and find us on there. We're working on our 17th edition of the magazine and uh, we launched that in 2018. So there's plenty of, plenty of, uh, of editions that you can read retrospectively. And the final thing, uh, if you're into YouTube and you like looking at content online through YouTube, we've got a channel called AI TV. We do interviews throughout the year. Uh, we do interviews at the show. And we put a lot of online content on there as well. But, but really the most important thing that we're trying to achieve on the continent, um, I'm, I'm based in South Africa, but we are Pan-African in what we try and achieve, is really joining up what we call the 4 IR economic pipeline. Um, it starts with young people at the one end uh, in, and in, in the main, mainly disadvantaged people. We perhaps don't even see uh, ICT or the fourth industrial revolution as something that they can aspire to all the way across through to global corporates like Amazon and um, Microsoft, uh, Google, et cetera, and everybody in between. So we're trying to bring along the entire community with us and inspire people at different sections of that journey. Um, we don't just talk about machine learning and deep learning in our community. We are focused on other technologies. I'm sure there's a few people on this uh, session today who are focused on other technologies. You can't really talk about AI without talking about data and data then leads to analytics and then how you um, bring data into your organization. Um, maybe you're using mobile, um, IoT, sensing, smart technologies. Uh, we also look at conversational process automation uh, and then all the softer issues, but becoming the more important issues like privacy, transparency, explainability, inclusivity, standards and regulation. These are all really important topics that we talk about. Um, if we look at the African continent, and I will talk about investment a little bit more when we get into the report, um, but just to introduce the concept that there are this uh, sort of four main hubs on the continent for anyone that's new to the region. Um, uh, Egypt dominating in the north, uh, Kenya in the east, Nigeria in the west, and South Africa uh, in the south. Um, there's a great uh, resource, which I encourage you to go to, uh, run by Max and Max, uh, the two Maxes, uh, the Big Deal uh, Africa report. Um, they produce some top class analysis about the tech investment landscape. And uh, I'm just showing you one infographic from a very deep database that they've got. And I encourage you to have a look at it. But essentially, those are the four main hubs uh, driving tech. And they also happen to be the four main hubs driving AI on our continent. Um, if we look at AI, I mean, AI typically sits in what we call the, the deep tech sector. Um, fintech has been the dominant, dominant technology um, across the continent for the last 10 years, really emanating out of things like uh, mobile money and PESA, and then growing into now digital payments, blockchain, uh, Web3, DLT, and all that great stuff, crypto. Um, but AI is a cross-cutting theme, uh, and it impacts many, many industry verticals. So we see this as a growing uh, segment um, and it's one that is attracting interest from investors both locally and, and internationally. The other area where there's a great opportunity on the African continent is on the early stage uh, 
AI landscape. Uh, this is an area that hasn't attracted much investment to date because it's seen as high risk. Um, but there are entities on the continent looking at this. There are two initiatives, uh, the Cirrus AI program and the African Consortium, AI Consortium. Um, go and check them out, learn a little bit about what they're trying to achieve. But really, there are some great opportunities now in this emerging uh, kind of uh, early stage sector, particularly IP that's coming out of universities. Um, the other thing it's important to say is we are a community of communities. Um, that's the way it works. Um, it's not just about business and government. It's about academia, NGOs, um, accelerators, incubators. Uh, we have a wide range of communities across the continent, and we, we actually list some of those. I'll touch on those in a minute in the report. The other thing that we're starting to see that's much more mature on, say, uh, Europe and Asia and North America is the creation of national associations around AI. I've just put one here from the Dutch, uh, Netherlands. Uh, the Dutch team, um, they, I've recently attended a presentation by them. There's a lot we can learn from how industry associations are being formed in other countries. They are now starting to be formed on the African continent, one in Tunisia, uh, there's one in uh, Kenya, um, uh, the one in Mauritius, for example. Um, these, these associations bring people together and, and it's particularly useful for industry to lobby with government and help government understand this, uh, this new and emerging field. Um, I think the other big trend that we have here it may not be necessarily a trend that's uh, prevalent in, in uh, say, the, the global north, but AI is, of, is often um, painted here as a, a, a sort of dangerous topic. Um, it's, it's all about killer robots. Uh, it's going to kill jobs. Um, it's going to be the end of the world, that kind of bad news story. Uh, and while there are some clear areas um, with regards to the technology that we need to safeguard, um, if, if you look at actually what AI is, it's a massive enabler for job creation and, and economic development. Um, new categories of job emerging and, and far from being a job killer, it's actually a job creator. So uh, it's, it's just very interesting that, that that tends to be the dominant narrative that we hear in the news a lot in this, in this particular region. The other interesting fact is, and this was some analysis from 2019 uh, by LinkedIn, I attended a, a LinkedIn presentation that they, they identified that at the top of the pyramid, uh, there are some very highly skilled um, people uh, in the AI cloud uh, data science category who are uh, leaving um, the, the region. Um, and so for every one new job that's created in this category, there are actually more than one person leaving in that category as well. Um, it, this was pre-COVID. It would be interesting to now see what those stats are. Um, so whilst we also have a, a challenge of getting people in at the bottom of the pyramid, we need to be mindful of the top that, you know, we don't lose those people to other countries. And maybe now it's easier for people to work in another country without leaving their country. So we, we can work from home from anywhere now. And there's some superb data scientists and, and machine learning enthusiasts now on, on our continent. Uh, a very clear sign of that uh, is from the Zindi. Africa platform, which is a data science challenge platform. They now have 42,000 uh, data scientists on their platform. So it's, it's been a, a great growth story. Um, obviously AI just come with a health warning. Uh, we know about it in the news. Uh, AI is as only as good as the data that it's trained on. Um, obviously this is a somewhat more humorous side of the kind of story about being careful about what we do with this technology and how we use it. Um, but when we boil it down to you know, the realities of how these technologies are being used. If you look at an autonomous vehicle, um, I, I got this statistic off, uh, off a, a presentation about the number of lines of code in an autonomous vehicle compared to a fighter jet and the, uh, the lunar module. Um, we are driving around cars with many, many millions of lines of code and they need to make split decisions um, as they go along. Um, now, it's one thing, training a, a, an autonomous vehicle on a homogenous uh, tarmac road that we find in the West or the global North, but many roads, uh, certainly on our continent, um, aren't like that. And, you know, are we training these uh, algorithms correctly to represent the world that they're actually gonna be in? And we know about things like uh, surveillance um, and looking at things like discrimination around things like loan applications and that kind of thing, social surveillance. But, the, you know, are we training these models with, with representative data? Is this going to be something we in the global south can take advantage of? So uh, just a word of warning on that one. 
Um, if you want to look at things like um, AI readiness and global policy, there's a great uh, repository called Oxford Insights, um, which looks at government readiness and also uh, ethical deployment um, or strategies around that around the world. Um, some countries in Africa now embracing this. Um, it's good to see it happening. And obviously, there's still a lot more work to do in that in that particular space. Um, and then really the, the, the final thing, and this is how I met Anna Maria, is we can't leave young people behind. Uh, we have to include young people. Africa um, holds many records, some positive, some negative. But one of the positives is that it's going to have the largest global population of people under the age of 25. Um, so how can they contribute to this debate? And there's some great work being done by uh, a whole range of entities, AI Future Lab, Botner, um, ITU, AI for Good looking at a youth manifesto for AI, and it's going to be interesting to see that when it's published. So that's an introduction. Um, now I want to sort of get into the report itself and, and start to tell you a little bit about it. So the, the, the key driver for me personally to do this report came from looking at a, an analyst report in 2018 that said this is the global AI startup landscape. And when I flicked through the report, I saw North America, South America, Europe, I saw Asia, Australia, India. And when, the, when I looked at the African map, it, it was blank. Uh, there was not one startup listed in that report. And really, that was quite sad because even by mid-2018 to so the end of that year, we had identified over several hundred startups on the African continent. And it, it really, what it said to me was there's missing data uh, around this continent and what's going on there. And it's typical of um, a lot of analysis that goes on. A Africa is kind of the sort of last thought of uh, region, uh, and yet it now presents one of the last frontier markets for growth. So it's kind of had suffered from this lack of data and at the same time represents a great opportunity for a whole range of reasons. Um, and so for me, this was a personal quest to try and fill that gap um, and at the same time, inform people that may be new to the region, um, don't necessarily understand what's going on across the continent. Maybe they just think AI is constrained to a few countries, uh, et cetera. So the, the, the driving force was to plug that gap and for this report to be a baseline that we can then uh, develop and grow. And, you know, we, we welcome contributions from, from, from anyone. But essentially, this was version one, uh, the minimum viable product. And obviously we're very pleased to uh, get this over the line. So you can get a copy of the report after this uh, presentation. We'll send you a, a link to get a 100% discount. Um, it, it, there is a charge for the report normally. Uh, it's on Gumroad, on the Gumroad platform. Uh, and if you just type in state of AI in Africa, you'll, you'll find it. Um, and, you, and then you can download a PDF copy, or if you've got a Kindle, you can download it to a, to a Kindle. So we'll basically give you, Anna Maria or myself will send you the, the, the discount code afterwards. You just type it in and, and then you get the report for free. Um, very pleased to say that in, in doing this report, I was supported by a, a couple of key people um, driving the AI ecosystem. John Kamara, based in Kenya, some of the great work he's doing. Uh, around the AI center of excellence um, and a lot of the work he's doing around patient record and blockchain initiatives. Uh, and then the global forward came from Stephen Abaraki, who's uh, a, a well-known industry figure, uh, one of the founders of the global AI for good movement and heavily involved with the ITU. Um, so I'm very grateful to them for, for giving an executive forward to the report. Um, so let's get into the the kind of stats uh, for all you statisticians out there, the numbers uh, are going to come thick and fast now. So um, what we wanted to try and do is just baseline the global view. How, how does Africa compare in terms of the number of companies uh, that, that specialize or, or declare that they have a specialism in, in AI? And I use LinkedIn for this particular analysis. So um, if we look at uh, Neymar, this was a, a new revelation for me. This is North America, which includes Canada, USA, and Mexico. Um, there were 22, 21,000 organizations that declared that they had a specialism in AI. Mapping that onto Europe, um, there was 20,000. Uh, Asia, uh, a little bit less, just 18,000. Middle East, just over 3,000. Latin America, just over 2,500. And in Africa, we were just under that mark at 2,300 plus. 
So it, it was just sort of positioning where we were as a continent against uh, the, 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 what you might call the big, the big players. Uh, and it was just interesting that we came out around the same, almost the same size as, as Latin America and the Middle East. Um, obviously, if we look at the Middle East, um, I sort of broke it down again a little bit further just to sort of uh, give you a, a sort of slightly different flavor. Um, uh, you know, UAE and Brazil, um, around the sort of same sort of numbers, South Africa, 720 odd, Israel, 627, um, and Nigeria, just over 450. So it was just to sort of pick out a couple of um, entities as a, as a baseline. Um, UAE is very interesting in the sense that, you know, essentially you've got two major cities, uh, Abu Dhabi and, and, and Dubai, and yet they have so much going on in that small country and the same for Israel. And one of the observations about those two countries is their governments have got strongly behind this technology as an enabler. Um, there's a significant friendly investment um, climate around. There's a lot of private investment going into these technologies and there's a lot of investment from a research perspective going into these technologies. Um, the, the Brazilian uh, uh, ecosystem was also pleasantly surprised uh, to see those numbers, um, you know, their national government have published a national strategy on AI. Um, and then we come down to sort of South Africa, Nigeria, um, tying for, um, you know, the, the top spots in, in Africa. Uh, Nigeria does have a national strategy. They do have a national center. Um, South Africa um, doesn't have those two things at the moment, but is working towards them. So it was just to give you some sort of sort of spotlight numbers just to compare. But this trend that we observe around smaller countries having a closer link between government, um, policy, uh, investment, and seeing these technologies as an enabler is a, is a key to, to successful growth. Um, so then the, if we just break it down across the, the continent itself, so now we're just focusing in on Africa. Um, again, this was just looking at LinkedIn data where uh, we could identify uh, that the company uh, was declaring a specialism in artificial intelligence. And the numbers broadly unsurprising from the sort of top four, um, South Africa, Nigeria, uh, Egypt, uh, and Kenya. But then when you look at the satellite um, countries around them, uh, you know, there's some healthy numbers uh, starting to emerge. Uh, if you start to look at Tunisia and Morocco in the north, uh, Algeria as well, as well um, uh, adding up there to the total. Uh, then you're starting to look at um, Ghana, uh, Cote d'Ivoire in, in, in West Africa, as well as Cameroon, uh, and then obviously onto the east with, with Kenya uh, and the surrounding countries, and then South Africa down, down at the bottom. Little, we, we drag Mauritius over, it's much further to the west than this map actually indicates, and it's a lot smaller. Um, but again, a, a, a small and focused uh, ecosystem there. Um, now, don't forget, this is only on the available data where there is a declaration of um, artificial intelligence as a specialism. There's probably a lot more companies than, than these numbers actually indicate. But as a kind of universal baseline, we felt that this was quite a good um, starting point for, for a general conversation around the continental view. So if we break it down into the, the, the regional kind of view, uh, then we start to look at uh, the north, the east, the south, the south and the west. Um, there are some initiatives which are going on, and I'll just touch on a few. I can't, I don't have the time to, to really talk about all of them. Um, but, it, you know, if you, if you look at the um, Egyptian Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, they've, they've identified uh, AI as a key uh, enabler and technology of focus. Uh, you've got the National Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics in Nigeria. You've got the Tunisian um, AI Association uh, with their logo there at the bottom left. Uh, we've got the AI Center of Excellence in, in, in uh, Kenya. And then it was interesting to look at some work which was done by the Smart Africa Association. They did some work to look at how uh, national governments can use a blueprint for developing their own national strategies. And, and so this blueprint document a blueprint for artificial intelligence in Africa um, is definitely worth checking out. Um, it outlines a framework that, that national governments can follow. Um, and then that subsequently led me on to some much more recent work, which was um, recently announced by the African um, Union or the African Union Development Agency. Um, 
and that organization is leading an initiative to look at a pan-African AI policy. Um, it's very early, early days on that work. It won't be published until 2023. Um, but if you go to the AUDA NEPAD uh, website, you can find out a little bit more about it. Um, but there's one, there was one um, initiative that, that really did stand out um, in this research, and, and it's one I've, I, I've been aware of for many years, and that's Data Science Nigeria. Um, Data Science Nigeria is, is a um, self-funded, uh, not-for-profit um, organization, and they've um, set out a vision to train over a million young engineers in machine learning and data science over the next 10 years. That, that initiative has been so successful that they've now expanded it outside of uh, Nigeria into wider Africa and actually outside of the African continent. And now they're called the da Data Science Network. They've actually just recently rebranded. So I definitely encourage people to check out these um, initiatives, associations. Um, um, they're very easily findable because I've included 31 of them in the report and there's a web link from each one. So you can just click on the logo and, um, and find them very easily. And talking of which, <laughs> that's actually on the next slide. So what, what we've done, um, we've broken it down by country and the major initiatives and communities that, that we, we feel we wanted to mention in this first version of the report. There are others uh, which we will include in the next version. Um, but we felt these were the ones that were really pushing um, in the right direction uh, and actually having significant impact from the work they're doing. Uh, if you look at the Masakane um, uh, project, which is Pan-African, it's looking at um, uh, using AI and deep learning for improving uh, natural language generation and, uh, and natural language processing for, for African languages, um, which is definitely something um, you should follow up on if you're interested in that particular um, subject. Uh, same with LAN Africa, um, doing some very interesting work in that particular space. And then there were also some um, uh, reference points uh, with the OECD. They're running the, the AI Policy Observatory, which is a global view of AI at the national level. Uh, you've got Oxford Insights, which I mentioned doing the um, AI readiness and ethical use of AI on a global basis. And then obviously the AI for Good movement um, based out of uh, Switzerland uh, and Geneva as part of the UN. Um, ITU programs. Um, those, those three are definitely worth looking at from a kind of uh, view of what's going on, particularly around um, SDGs and how AI is being used in those particular um, fields. But plenty of resources to click on there, folks. And, um, and within the report, you can just click on the logo and it'll take you to that particular um, community or initiative. So the next thing we wanted to do, it's very all very good, good and well looking at that helicopter view, but now we wanted to kind of boil it down a little bit further and start to look at, um, you know, where are these uh, companies based? What is their company type? What segments of, of industry are they in? Um, again, you could say, well, unsurprisingly, a lot of these companies are privately held. Um, you know, many of them are, are, are startups and, and SMEs. Um, but this just gave us a feel at, at the high level um, from the data that we have to then look at these uh, entities and, and get, get a feel for which category they fell into. Not all companies disclose this. Again, this is information that, you know, we, we can get, you can get this off LinkedIn. You can also get it off Crunchbase, but it's not always necessarily universally declared. Um, so this was just based on the data that we could get. But it gives us a rough picture that the private sector is the key, energy, uh, key engine for growth uh, across uh, our particular continent. And then if we look at the segments that um, they are, are most prevalent in, uh, unsurprisingly, ICT, information technology and internet, computer software was, a, was a, what, a, what I would call a catch-all category. Uh, and then a lot of other companies then listed the industry segment that they were in. Now, we identified over 120, I think it was 121 industry segments that AI uh, is impacting in the analysis that we did. So that, that pretty much tells us that this is a kind of universally impacting um, technology. Um, there are some um, markets where it's having 
greater impact or greater uptake, you know, particularly in things like financial services, telecommunications. Um, obviously, we see a lot of um, uptake in the, in the banking sector. Um, but you know, this will give you this gives you a, a basic analysis of uh, which of these industry segments um, are, are are driving and 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 the companies are, are residing in. Um, you know, we, there was some very interesting stuff um, around things like health and wellness. Um, you've got uh, education platforms, uh, electronics, manufacturing, e-learning. Um, that you know, as I say, over a hundred in total. And it was just interesting to see that that predominance uh, and where they form. Um, the other thing was we wanted to try and get an idea of, you know, is this a growing market? Um, is this a market where, uh, you know, what's the kind of growth look like? Um, and, and how big are these companies? So again, we were able to get um, staffing levels uh, at, at most of the companies that we had on the database. Um, and the interesting thing was that the, the vast majority, around 75%, have 100 or less staff in them, uh, with around 30% having less than 10 staff. So again, for any, anyone that's looking at this as a, uh, from an economic perspective, um, your SME uh, sector, your startup sector and your SME that, uh, or SMB, depending on how you phrase it, is vitally important um, for your economy because these companies have the potential to generate um, a lot of revenue, which leads to taxation and job creation, um, but the vast majority are young and they are small. And talking of young, uh, we then did some breakdown and analysis of um, the age of these companies. Now, some of the companies we had on our database uh, were founded when I, in the year I was born, um, giving away my age there perhaps, but um, we broke it down into five year segments. And we sort of got an exponential curve. Now, the great thing about exponential curves is investors and econo economists get excited about those curves. But it was also interesting just to see in the last couple of years, there's been this slight tailing off in the number of companies that are being created each year. Now, what, what could have caused that? Well, could be COVID, perhaps. Um, maybe uh, it's a bias in our analysis. Um, or maybe it's just the fact that, you know, there are only so many companies that we can be created and supported in, in, in a given category. But nonetheless, I mean, the last 10 years have seen the vast majority of companies that we've analyzed have been created in the last 10 years. And um, it doesn't seem to be um, something that's, um, you know, so I don't think it's gonna carry on in a steep exponential, but it's, uh, it's certainly still growing. So let's look at the investment landscape. Uh, as I mentioned, Startups and small companies are, are vital to the ecosystem. And whilst, if you look at the infographic on the, on the left-hand side, um, we looked at that the infographic on the left-hand side is for total investment for the entire tech ecosystem for all categories. And what we've done on the right with the right infographic is just specifically look at deals which were AI, and deep tech focused. So basically whilst South Africa might be number three, for example, in total tech investment, it's actually number one when it comes to attracting investment in this particular category. And we assessed um, from declared uh, levels of investment that about half a billion dollars has been secured by AI deep tech companies in Africa um, across 12 different countries. Um, and South Africa seems to be best at attracting um, that, that investment. That might be because it's got a more uh, mature VC ecosystem, perhaps. Uh, but it was interesting to see that you get the odd mega deal that skews the numbers. So one of those mega deals was InstaDeep, uh, which is a Tunisian founded uh, deep learning um, startup. They just recently secured Series A funding in January um, of 100 million US dollars. Um, it's still one of the top 10 deals done this year, um, but it just gives you an indication. And this, this company was founded in 2014. Um, I will come on to it as a case study in a second, but um, Karim Berger is the, the founder. He's also one of the, the creators of the deep learning in Darba. This is a significant um, result for 
our tech ecosystem in Africa. Um, but it also underlines that some of this investment is not necessarily coming from within the continent. So the total number of deals that we actually looked at um, for, for that half billion was, was made up from 226 investments and 141 separate organizations were funding those deals. So, you know, it's not like there's one or two VCs dominating the landscape. You've actually got a very complicated uh, or diverse, perhaps is a better phrase, uh, ecosystem of investors. And many of them are not on the African continent. So if you are a tech entrepreneur on this call uh, and, you've, and you, or you, you're building an AI startup, be mindful of the fact that a lot of the people that might want to invest in you are not in your country or they may be not even on your continent. Um, and we do break this down a little bit more in the report. Uh, we, do, we do some analysis on the top investors uh, across tech in general, and then the top investors that are investing in, in AI. The other interesting observation is that while 80% of those deals, of those 226 deals were done by one investor only, the remaining 20% were made up of two or more investors. So again, another, another signpost perhaps to anyone seeking investment for your AI startup in Africa is don't go and knock on one door and find one investor. Go and knock on many doors and try and find more than one investor. The chances are to get going, you're, you probably will in the main get going with one investor, but investing in numbers um, reduces risk. Um, Co-investing between investors is very common. That also reduces risk for the investors and also perhaps for you as a, as a, as a, as a founder. Um, it gives you more firepower, more knowledge. Um, and, and obviously these can range from um, angel investors right through to more well-established VCs. Um, corporates are also investing in um, startups. Uh, Non-equity assistance and grant uh, assistance is very common. We just launched the Swedish AI fund um, to invest in AI startups in Africa, and that is a grant non-equity scheme um, for investments anywhere up to uh, the first tranche um, uh, is a shared tranche of around 100,000 euros. Um, so you can find investment um, in a variety of different um, uh, circles, um, you know, connect with your local accelerators and incubators. Typically, there are investors associated with those, but 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 read the report and uh, we, we do list the key investors in this sector. And if you want to dig even deeper and uh, then sign up for the Africa Big Deal database and uh, the, the two maxes, they're doing some fantastic work. And it's probably the most authoritative data about the continent at the moment. Um, I mentioned Karim and his team at InstaDeep. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing success story and some of the technology and solutions they're developing are are really worth having a closer look at. Um, but, but the infographic on the left is a key one. And the key thing about that infographic is that for the last four years, it's showing that the time it's taken for us to get to a billion dollars total investment on the continent is almost halving each time. Um, and the time it took us to get to 2 billion this year um, was almost half again what it took us to get to 2 billion the year before. So clearly if this trend continues, um, this is a positive trend for the continent. Um, it's, a, it's a sign that maybe the dynamic uh, in the more developed world um, may be stalling uh, at the moment because of some uh, uncertainty in the market. But for, for, for many investors, and certainly some of the ones I've spoken to, the motives and uh, desires as to why they're investing in Africa are not necessarily directly related to a downturn in the market. There's a lot of investment going into companies that are focused on things like health, um, sustainable development goals, environment, uh, society, uh, and the dynamic for those investments is different to then say the traditional VC commercial investments that are often made. Um, so again, it's a good time if you're looking for, for funding, um, there appears to be a lot of willing funders around and the money is flowing into the continent. So um, we can introduce you to those investors as well. We do have investors that we do introduce and startups too, so you can get hold of me after the, after the call. 
Now, there is a new phrase which I came across, uh, Africa's next wave of unicorns. I put a line through that with this new phrase called sunicorns. Um, often, uh, you hear other words here on the continent like gazelles and zebras. And um, anyway, the, the bottom line is, is that this ecosystem is beginning to create this bow wave of, of companies which are approaching, uh, or, or I think there are now two or three uh, unicorns on the continent. Um, but again, this, it's this bow wave that some of the startups like InstaDeep that, 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 that were founded in sort of the, the mid sort of 2014, 2015, 2016 now are starting to get these bigger series rounds and they're flowing through. Um, again, they're not necessarily AI focused like InstaDeep. Some of them are using AI as part of their offering uh, like Jumo. Um, but it, the, the, this, is, this is a very positive sign for, for the market. Um, if you'd looked at this uh, landscape just five years ago, many of these logos and certainly this volume uh, of investment and valuations uh, would, would have looked very, very different. So watch out for the sunicorns is the message. So just sort of moving into the last few slides. Um, because we're a trade focused community, um, one of the things that we're able to do is then look at where we see momentum across the continent um, from activity and numbers of companies that we interact with for our particular event and, and magazine. Uh, but we also look at the uh, countries where there are startups and companies looking to get into the continent or, or who are already here. A lot of this work comes through uh, relationships we have with the embassies, but uh, it's not unsurprising at the, the country level that uh, on the left-hand side, it, it breaks down uh, as per the, the chart that, which I showed you earlier. Um, but then when you look at the non-African countries, um, you do see some interesting trends. Um, different embassies and different trade missions have a different dynamic, um, but the ones where tech and AI seem to be most prevalent are in sort of US, UK, India, Switzerland, Netherlands, France, and UAE. Um, very healthy AI ecosystem in countries like Canada. Um, and we've also interacted with the Israeli embassy as well. But <clears throat> these are, you know, there's a, there's a, a significant number of, uh, of companies where their African strategy may be through a partner. Um, so again, if there's any entrepreneurs who wanna get their business started as a distributor or value add reseller and service partner, Go and look at some of the, the countries where there are startup um, tech companies that don't have a presence in South Africa. Traditionally, I mean, that's how I got my, my business started here. There was a, a company looking to distribute a product um, that was uh, in the collaboration space. Uh, I started as their kind of uh, deployment partner and we grew our business um, up to 22 staff uh, in less than four years. So Another route to growing a business here on the continent is to actually start to on-sell or deploy companies' technologies from countries outside the region. And, and there are plenty of them. There, there are plenty of companies that don't have a physical presence in Africa. They are gonna use a partner strategy to get established. And this represents a very interesting opportunity for, for any um, entrepreneur. It lowers the risk for you because the product is already made by them. They also provide you with the support. You just need to open doors from them and then arrive at some kind of, uh, whether it's commission structure or uh, reward structure to, to help land these technologies in, in the continent. Um, Equally, you might also be an entrepreneur that's based in Africa and you want to get into those countries. You want to get into the US market, the UK market, um, the Swiss market, um, or, or Europe or South America. Again, we can introduce you to the embassies where they have programs to help accelerate you into those markets. So it's definitely a two-way street. It's not just about trade within the continent. If you want to get out and, and expand, there's ways of doing that. But equally, if you want to grow a business here, you can pick multiple products off the shelf and then start selling them and deploying them here. And there's no end of companies looking to do that. So that's the country level. If we then look at the city level, um, at the city level, we tried to do some analysis that looked at where, 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 are, the, where are the most companies based within the African continent uh, at the city level. Um, now, it was interesting when we did this analysis um, that Johannesburg and Pretoria, which kind of constitutes what's known as the Hauteng 
Botswana region of, of South Africa, they, they had about 75, I think about 70, 72% of the market share um, in South Africa, followed by Cape Town. And then if you look to the other cities then that follow behind, then you're looking at Lagos uh, in Nigeria, Ni Nairobi in Kenya, Tunis in, in um, Tunisia, Accra uh, in Ghana, et cetera. Um, but then if you looked at the cities that we've interacted, well, the companies that we've interacted with and the city that they're headquartered in, then it's no surprise that um, California, although technically uh, not a city, it's a state, um, but you know, you're looking at San Francisco where a lot of these companies are headquartered from Silicon Valley, uh, New York, um, Dubai, as I mentioned. Um, the interesting thing with Dubai is that there does seem to be a lot of willingness for, for people to um, look at Africa as a market from the Middle East. Uh, naturally, Saudi Arabia now doing some very interesting things around AI, Project Neom, for example. Um, they, they just announced their uh, line city. Um, the, the, the entire concept around some of these initiatives has AI at the heart of it. So if you've got an offering that's maybe smart city centric, um, cities like uh, Dubai, um, Abu Dhabi, um, and some of the initiatives in Saudi are looking to, to, to exploit those technologies for smart city, smart society, smart citizen. Uh, and, and, and there's no end of opportunity perhaps for you there if you can find a partner to open that door for you. Um, Paris was an interesting one in the sense that um, the French have a significant um, government support around AI, as do the, the Netherlands and uh, Switzerland. An interesting Texas kept coming up um, from our analysis. That was a strange one. I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and then you've got um, obviously uh, Bangalore. Um, uh, India has, I think India off the top of my head, had 10,000 um, AI uh, companies declaring an AI specialism, which, you know, when you, you think about that, that's, that's quite interesting for one country. Um, so you can look at things locally from a country perspective and internationally from a country's perspective, but it's also interesting to then look at the cities um, as well and where there is uh, either a soft landing point for you uh, or if you want to, uh, as I say, um, deploy a technology as a, as a value add partner or distributor. You don't have to invent your own product from scratch is the key thing here. Um, oh, this was the breakdown for South Africa, as I mentioned, um, Johannesburg, Pretoria. Um, well, South Africa has number one uh, as the, the most um, declared entities um, with a specialism in AI, and, and most of those are in jo Johannesburg and Pretoria. So I think it counts, yeah, it was about uh, 60, so yeah, almost 70%. Um, so to summarize, I, I, I wanna make sure we finish on time. Uh, and I said we'd leave sort of 10 to 15 minutes for questions at the end. Um, we, we looked at, we've got over 2,400 companies that, that we actually looked at in this analysis. 66% um, of them uh, are, are based in four countries, South Africa, Nigeria, um, Egypt, and Kenya. Um, deep tech, AI and deep tech is now attracting significant investment. Um, most of the companies, 75% uh, of them have 100 or less staff and almost three quarters of, the quarters of them are privately held. 40% um, of them were founded in the last five years, uh, which was an interesting stat, um, but it is a growing market. So one thing investors and banks like are growth markets. And again, you know, it is a good time, irrespective of the economic climate. Um, many of the technologies are still emerging um, still maturing. If you look at things like voice and conversational AI, um, some, many African languages are still not supported by those technologies. So that, that is going to be an evolving area where new services can be deployed in countries where those languages have not traditionally been supported. We identified over 120 ind industry segments um, and 65% were focused around six key industries, information, technology, services, computer software, internet, financial services, management consulting, and telecommunication. So again, that, that also is an indicator perhaps where most of these technologies are in demand. Um, so if you've got a, a, a play to make, um, maybe this report will give you some indicators as to where to go and play. So to conclude, 
Um, Africa has a uh, vibrant AI ecosystem, not like the empty map, which I saw back in 2018. Um, it is a, an established sector, whether you look at it from a sector in its own right, or whether you look at it as a cross-cutting theme. Um, it's clear that the rate of tech investment is accelerating on the continent, which is another positive, and that four regional hubs, if you're lucky enough to be in one of those hubs, um, it's going to be um, easier for you to get going. But some of the other secondary and tertiary um, uh, countries now are catching up. And whilst they might be smaller in total number, the linkage between policy, investment and the climate may actually be more favorable and you may accelerate quicker. South Africa is the number one country in terms of numbers of these um, uh, uh, organizations with Joburg being the lead, leading city. Um, and SMMEs or SMBs do play a major role in this value chain. And so if there's anyone here looking at government policy, um, and if you don't have an industry association in your country right now, um, now's a good time to go and create one. And uh, we're certainly working on it here and lobbying for that in, in South Africa. Um, there are a variety of national AI um, associations and strategies that are um, referenced in the report, and, and please go and have a look at them. And I guess the final thing is uh, obviously the Pan-African African Union Alliance. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what comes from that. Um, hopefully it'll be a, a guiding uh, instructional document and, and a strategy, um, but we'll see what that uh, produces in, in 2023. So that's it from me. I think I've been on time there. Anna Maria, I, am, I, am I good on time? Amazing job, very good. Thank Thanks you so much. much. This was really great. I see some applauses, the, the, the emojis there everywhere. Thank you so much, Nick. This was really, really nice. And um, I see also one question in the chat. Uh, can we get the presentation? Is it possible to share the presentation? Are you okay with it? Uh, well, we're recording the session and it'll be on YouTube. So um, yeah, uh, sure. uh, the, the presentation itself is, is much more extensive than that. And it's like over a hundred meg files. So I tend not to share the file itself, but this, this presentation will be available on YouTube very soon. We said, we'll send you that link. We'll send a link to everyone definitely. And also, some who couldn't join us. I received some messages in the meantime. Also, Stephen Ibaraki sent me a message saying, please say hi to everyone from my side. And he's supporting. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's, uh, he was following us. So that's really great. I see a lot of nice thank yous in the chat for you, Nick. So thanks again. Uh, maybe uh, I don't see any questions, but I've gotten a lot of private messages as well. And I shared a lot of links as Nick was chatting about the different um you know the magazine the event etc so all the links are in the chat and everybody can uh, see them uh, a lot i see a lot of thank yous there in the chat so uh, that's really great i see one question uh, is there any evidence that these companies that operate in africa as ai firms are owned or started by africans maybe you could address yeah. this one Nick. yeah i just saw that hi hi vincent um yeah i mean it, the vast majority of uh, the ones that we've looked at um, from an African perspective, are, are originated by African entrepreneurs, uh, you know, which is a, a very positive um, sign. Um, as I said, you know, to start an AI company, uh, you don't necessarily even need an AI product. Uh, you don't need to develop it yourself. You can actually um, on-sell or resell someone else's. Um, it is an interesting debate. Uh, I know that, that there are lots of conversations around things like data sovereignty and making sure that Africa builds African solutions for, Af for Africa, um, I think, which is very important. But, but my argument is Africa should be building African solutions, which are also applicable for the rest of the world. Why stop your market at Africa? And there's so much innovation that's going on on the continent. So to answer the question is um, yes, um, a lot of them are founded by, by uh, local entrepreneurs. And, um, and a lot of them are finding markets outside of, of their country and, and the continent, which is uh, something we should be proud of. More often than not, and it's another reason why we started the magazine, was that for so startups to tell their story, um, it's, af it's actually expensive for them to do that. A lot of stories that, that need to be told don't get told because media platforms want to charge for it. So your news is not necessarily seen as news. It's seen as advertising. So. Um, you know, we, we do try and give a voice to people for free. I mean, uh, that's one of the reasons why we created the community. But I think the media could do a lot more to actually tell the good news narrative around around the homegrown story 
um, because it's often hidden. And, and, and often when, when, when a few startups get into the news, and I, I know ones from five, six years ago, you, you'd think there's only five startups in Africa that actually do AI, and, you know, and our report obviously shows there's a lot more. So I think there's a lot more the media can do to tell that good news narrative, and I encourage them to do it. That's really great. And I see also Vincent is from the East African newspaper in Nairobi. Yeah. Start Vincent telling some good news stories, Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Good question. And definitely connect. Uh, also, I see another question on um, from Olivia. How do you think we can grow the skills base in Africa to support AI further? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of the skills, I mean, a lot of, there is some stuff now coming into national curriculums around things like data science and getting people to think about design thinking and creative thinking around solution development. Um, and, and that's down at the school level. Um, but if you were a wannabe data scientist or machine learning engineer, or you, you want to get into that space, I, I just start looking at some of the online courses. If you want to um, start educating yourself, there's like a gazillion things on YouTube that you can watch if you have access to that. Um, if you don't have a laptop, go to a library if you can uh, or share a laptop with someone. I, I mean, I know not everyone is, 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 is lucky enough to, to own their own laptop, but, but hook up with um, some of the local incubators and accelerators. Maybe turn up at a evening or late afternoon meetup session. Um, just turn up. You'll be surprised what can happen if you turn up. Um, and don't go there thinking, oh, you know, this is just for people who've got PhDs in deep learning and I need to understand linear statistics and, and all this other stuff. Just go and turn up and listen and learn. And then that can open many more doors for you locally. So it might be that you find out about, um, you know, there was a, an, a, an organization that started in Cape Town called it the Explore Data Science Program. It's very much aimed at people who knew nothing about data science. And if you could get a taxi or a train to the um, location where they were operating, you could sign up for their program and they put you through a crash course. Um, they also give you some life skills around things like um, employment readiness or entrepreneurial development. So I'd encourage people to turn up and explore the local ecosystem first, look at things online, more often than not they're free. Um, as long as you've got an internet connection and if you don't maybe try and get to a library or a place where you can at least share a laptop and get on board data science nigeria actually their initiative they made a whole load of resources for offline people so people who aren't even connected to the internet so a lot of it was on cds books um and and, and you would get a package that um if you signed up for their program um it would be it would be sent to you or available to you so um yeah, get stuck in and don't be shy. Um, turn up and, and start, start, start the journey. The, the journey starts with you stopping what you're doing right now and then going and, and, and doing something completely different. And, and before you know it, you will be doing something completely different. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you, Nick. It's true. Sometimes just showing up is like half of the job, as they say. So uh, that's good to turn up to this. Uh, and I know that there's more questions, so maybe we'll take a couple yeah. more minutes. Sure. Um, uh, so there are Two questions, maybe a little bit of insights on AI and healthcare or AI and yeah. education, but most importantly, how can colleagues here engage in this space? So I guess the event is a great uh, space to engage. Of course, yeah. such uh, <clears throat> launches are also the same, but if you can give some insight in that. Well, yeah, first of all, everyone will get a ticket to come to our show. Um, it's an in-person event this year, so you do need to come to Johannesburg. Um, but this is not the only event that happens in Africa. There are multiple events. Uh, I learned about one today that's being run uh, by the Ethiopian Artificial Intelligence Association. I only found out about that today. I didn't even know it was an event that's happening. That's virtual and physical. Um, so if you, again, if you wanna get involved, um, just go online and type in AI Events Africa and you'll, you'll see there's a whole bunch. Look at the Meetup app platform. There's lots of local meetups that are happening, um, covering all sorts of topics which change on a monthly basis. It might be that when you turn up there, there's only like four or five people. Uh, that's fine. Um, at least those people that have turned up are enthusiastic and actually you're more likely to have an enthusiastic and productive conversation with them. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the starting points are numerous, um, but if you have a phone or a laptop, um, AI Events Africa or AI Events in the country you're in, 
and then just have a look at them or AI communities. And, um, and you'll be surprised just how many more are than you think. Um, there's a question here on ML Ops from John Robert. It's more uh, of an invite to collaborate together, I think, on a, on a survey. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You can reach me offline. John, I think we'll, have we got everybody's details? Anna Marie? Can yes, you, and I yeah. also shared the next LinkedIn in the beginning, so I will reshare it again in the chat. So if anybody okay. wants to talk, but we have the details of everyone. Um, what is There's the data is the fuel of AI? What about the state of AI data governance in Africa? Um, well, it depends what you mean by data governance. I mean, is it data governance at the company level or the national level, government level, city level, provincial level? Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not I'm sure this is an African question. I think this is a global question. I mean, if you look at um, data in, in, in its rawest form and you look at then data privacy, um, data privacy varies from country to country, state to state. You know, if you look at the European Union, they're about to uh, publish their first, uh, or they have published, I can't remember the, whether where they are with it, but the, 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 the European Union AI Regulation Act. Um, you know, what, what, what's happening with your face, right? Your, your face for the last 10 years plus has been on Facebook or LinkedIn or some form of social platform. Um, it's probably been harvested. Um, it's sitting somewhere as a, in a database. Um, what, 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 do I have the rights to my face or, or does someone else, you know? I mean, it's an ongoing debate and I think it's a global debate. Um, in, in terms of Africa, it varies. Um, for example, in South Africa, we don't have a national strategy or, or a national act around AI, but we have a data privacy commission and the data privacy act, um, which is enforceable or can be enforced. So if you feel that, you know, data in some form is being used in a way it shouldn't be used for the purpose that you signed up to, then, then, then that organization is liable for prosecution. And we've seen the Information Commissioner's Office in, in the UK prosecuting companies for spam, um, spam calls, um, you know, harassment, um, unwanted um, solicitation. So it really depends what you mean by um, data governance. Um, uh, so it, it is a very complicated topic and, and one that we could probably have another webinar on, to be honest. Um, hey, thank you so much, Nick. I think also thanks to Liz for sharing. She's sharing a journey of a I, startup in the space. You, you know this? Uh, yeah. Hi, Liz. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, obviously that link there for the InstaDeep story. I mean, it's, it's a fascinating story. I mean, what, what they've achieved in the last sort of eight years is, is, is definitely worth following. It's, it's a, I know Karim also speaks very eloquently around the you know, why Silicon, the Silicon Valley model doesn't work in South Africa. It's very much around um, corporate innovation and startups working together with investors and corporates investing in startups as well. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had a, someone say oh. something there, but um, yeah, so definitely worth uh, following up on that. I, Karim and, and, and that InstaDeep story is uh, really re a, real, a real good one to, to learn more about. Um, are there any other questions? We've got. I, I think I, I just noticed that John sent earlier if he could ask a question through audio. So I don't know, John, if you're still wanting to ask your question, uh, if you want to feel free to unmute yourself and come on stage, if one can say it like this. Um, I don't know, John, if you're here. Yeah, um, yeah I'm here. Um, can you hear me, please? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we can hear, can hear you, John. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm going to um, send you a message on LinkedIn later, but I just wanted to um, ask some questions because I noticed your survey was focused on the complaints and not really on why it's sometimes difficult for Africa. So I noticed, um, from what I've noticed um, online and from working in AI, the problem in Africa is not just the complaints, but it's really difficult for these complaints to um, do AI and because the problems are different, the infrastructures are different and stuff like that. So. I mean, we can talk about that after, but I just wanted to maybe give us some information on um, why it's kind of difficult for AI in Africa and the challenges of AI in Africa. Yeah, look, I mean, if, if you looked at the landscape 10 years ago, um, that, and I'm just gonna use corporates as an example. I mean, like if you look at AWS, for example, and their platform, um, 10 years ago, there were no AI services on that platform. If you looked at it in, uh, five years ago, they were just starting to put AI 
services into that platform. If you look at it, like even a year ago, I mean, it's like exponential number of services now that they're starting to add on to it. So I think globally, uh, the, the, the market has opened up for anyone to create a company at almost zero cost, assuming you've already got a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. And I don't um, say that that's not a big hurdle for many people on the continent, uh, because it is. Um, but there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur because your access to these platforms and the associated ecosystem that supports them uh, is now broadly free. So that, that, that in itself is a kind of a global thing. It's not just uh, something that Africa can take advantage of. But then if you look at things locally, um, things like data center provision um, is not the same as it is uh, in the global north, for example. So um, I know when I first came here in, in 2011, you know, there was, you had like timeouts on doing basic transactions online, you know, just because of latency on, on connectivity. Um, that, you know, in South Africa, we have, we have power cuts. <laughs> um, you know, I have a generator in my garage to, uh, to get through my work day when we, when we have power cuts. And that's something that's common on the continent. Um, so yeah, there are infrastructural challenges, um, but, you know, if you look at what's happening with, say, data centers, there is a lot more investment coming in. We've had the new CECOM cable uh, laid. I think the Google cable has also just been connected to the continent. I think Facebook have also funded another cable. Um, so, you know, gradually it is changing. But the other positive is the investment climate has changed. So there's a much greater readiness now for investors to invest. So before you had very few options as, a, as a, an early stage entrepreneur. One, there were no VCs that wanted to invest because it was too early and too risky. Um, so you had to rely on family and friends and angels. The banks aren't interested in you here. The banks are like almost zero risk. Uh, like, I'd almost put it at like minus. <laughs> they, they want it, zero risk, right? So you, you, you'll get very little from them uh, if you've got no security. So the climate is changing uh, and it's not, it's not just infrastructure. You need capital to, to, to grow uh, and that capital can come from different sources. It's not just VC. Capital can come from your first customer. Um, you can fund your business in part from invoices that you get for providing services. And so again, you know, if I use my own business model. I came here as a foreigner with no school network, no friends network, no business network. I started from scratch. I used an off-the-shelf product to get me going. And then eventually I ended up building software to serve my clients. Um, but it wasn't where I started. So sometimes the, the dynamic in this sector, sorry, the dynamic in Africa is that many companies want to get into the market. And that can be your calling card to, to start your own business. And then once you become established, then you can then you can branch out. The infrastructure is catching up, although it's slow. But the key catalyst to growth is finance, and that and that is increasing rapidly. As I say, the, the time it's taking to reach these critical milestones is halving each year. So it's a positive time, particularly if you're looking at things like non-commercial um, applications. If you're looking at things like um, SDGs, um, environment, sustainable development, goal type investing. There are, there's a lot of money chasing that right now. And, and Africa is sitting at an interesting position in that. So it's quite, again, it's, it's, a, it's probably a, a, a two hour webinar we could do on that one question alone. I, ho I hope that helps. Thank you very much, Nick. I think we should uh, have another, maybe a follow-up session to this one, <laughs> given all the questions and all the interest. But I guess the follow-up session is the event itself. So uh, maybe given we are uh, way above the time limit. Thanks very much to everyone for joining us. Uh, I think everyone will be receiving this week, definitely the codes for both the report and the events. Uh, I hope that many of you will be there. And uh, please, when you are there, take a picture of Nick and put it on socials and tag me because I want to see this happening in real life. <laughs> so thanks so much, Nick. Any last uh, words for our group here? Uh well, first of all, thank you to you, Anna Maria, for helping get this off the ground. Um, I, you know, I am grateful for uh, all the connectivity and, and, and uh, reach that you guys have afforded us. And to thank everyone that's joined us on the, on the session today. Um, as I say, for, for any young, younger wannabe entrepreneurs here, um, 
start your journey by turning up uh, and showing interest and you'll be surprised what doors open. So I hope that's positive to end on. But thanks for you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks very much, everyone. And uh, see you soon at the event. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.